about the power of prayer. Sometimes when you, uh, when you utilize something over and over and it doesn't seem to produce the desired results that you, you feel it should produce, come on. Sometimes you feel like discarding that thing or throwing that thing aside. But I'm here to tell you that 20, in 2024, prayer still works. Amen. 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 Prayer still works. And, and whatever you do, don't throw your prayer life away. Amen. You know, the Bible says we are to pray without ceasing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Well, 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 Pastor, how exactly do we pray without ceasing? Well, I don't know about you. I just don't pray when I come up here. I pray when I'm behind my wheel, when I'm driving. I pray while I'm up in Walmart shopping. You know, I, I pray while I'm at the restaurant. Glory to God. And the, this world is full of devils. You need to be praying all the time. Amen? So it tells us, I wonder why uh, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. It seems like what it's saying is keep uh, a relationship, keep a line open with God 24-7. I believe that thing is saying we need, we need to constantly pray because of the, uh, uh, the environment. And then there's evil all around you all the time and you need to keep that line of communication open. So I want to talk about prayer today, but I want to talk to you about it under this topic. You remember Jesus said, greater works, greater works shall you do. Amen. Wait a minute. Jesus said, You're gonna, we're going to do greater works than what he did? Yes. How is that possible? Seeing that he raised the dead. Hmm? Seeing that he fed 20, 25,000 people at one time. How are we going to do greater works than Jesus? Do we have a greater anointing than what he has? Certainly not. Amen. But turn with me, if you would, please. Go over to John uh, 14. John chapter 14. And I want the church to... Uh, I want the church, I want us to get together and pay a surprise visit to Deacon Randolph. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, he's, uh, I believe God's going to bring him home. Amen. But there's been some delays. Yes. And the delays they're attacking his faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You know, when you, when you go in the hospital for a few days, you get phone calls, you get all that kind of stuff for a few days. But after you end up staying there for a while, I'm going to tell you what happens. The phone calls stop, the visits stop, and you end up finding yourself alone. Amen? Amen. I want the church to, I want to get together real soon with a few people who would be willing to take a ride down to Charleston to the hospital and see him and check on him and just, just, just go in there and encourage him. Amen? Amen. Glory to God in Jesus' name because he's one of ours and that's the, way, that's the way we do it here at Freshwood Church. Amen? You're in the hospital. I'm coming to see you. I ain't coming to see you one time. I'm coming to see you. Amen? So we just, just want to stir everybody up Everybody else up on that. Y'all see these brothers standing? Yes, sir. See these brothers standing? You know what that means? Nobody better not come in here pulling no mess. <laughs> Ain't that right, Sister Outlaw? <laughs> we ain't playing. We ain't playing up in here. And you know, if they come in here pulling mess, you know the Bible says you can lay hands. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, John 14. Um, 
We're going to start reading. We're going to start reading in verse 10. John 14 and verse 10. Y'all pray for me today. It says, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Now, you know, you know, Jesus is defending his ministry here. Isn't that a shame? He has to defend his ministry. Yes. To a people that's been looking for his appearance for 2,000 years. Mm. Wait a minute. The, the, the Messiah was promised to the Jews in the Old Testament. Mm. So, so when he came and stood right in front of them, he came to his own and his own did what? Yes. Receive him not. So he's defending his ministry here. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, for sure, for sure, I say unto thee, unto you, he that believeth on me, wait a minute, the works that I do shall he do also. Wait a minute, so what's the qualification? How do you qualify to do these works? Just believe. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. How do I qualify to raise the dead? Just believe you can do it. Yes, yes, yes. You see, the power of God is so present we would think that raising the dead, would, we'd have to be praying and shouting all night long. You know, if you believe and you're in faith, you just walk over there and say, get up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, 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 how do I qualify to do greater works? Believe. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Don't you know you got some family members who find themselves in a situation dealing with illnesses and diseases? That they need for you to walk in the power of God. Yeah. Amen. Wait a minute. How much of a benefit would it be for them for you to be walking in the power of God? For you to be believing I can do all things. Yes. Wait a minute. I don't have to have Bishop here. I don't need T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar. I'm here. Oh, help me up in here. The Bible talked about Peter. Uh, when the apostle Peter was passing through, they took their sick people and laid them out in the streets that his shadow, when his shadow touched them, yes. they were completely healed. Yes. And something else we need to understand, and, and theology will mess us up in the church. Yes. We know that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh, right? Yes. Amen. But Jesus didn't heal as God. Jesus healed people as a man filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. yes. That's why he said, you know, greater works shall you do. Yes. If everything he did, he did it as God. You ain't God. So he did it as a man filled with the power of God. Yes. That's what I'm trying to tell the church yes. today. Yes. I want you to get this. So he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, mm -hmm. the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these, wait a minute, greater works than these shall he do? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I go to my Father. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, yes. that I will do. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. Greater works than these. What qualifies as greater works? I'll just, I'll, I want you to think for a minute. Notice what he said. The greater works are whatsoever you ask in my name. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Let's just bog down there for a second. I'm not going to be long. Yes. What's the greater works? Whatsoever you ask in my name. Did you catch that? So, it doesn't make a difference how high the mountain is. You can't view conquering it through your own ability. You have to view conquering this mountain through the power of God. That's what he's telling you. If you can't
can believe for it, I'll give you the. So how do I work a miracle? I believe for it. In today's church, in today's society, what do you think they're fighting for? What do you think Satan is fighting for? He's fighting for this earth. Doesn't the Bible call Satan the God of, come on, talk to him, the God of this world? That's how successful he is. If he wants to take over this world. Glory to God. So they, they, they take prayer out of schools. Who is this young fellow right here? Huh? He a handsome fellow. Yeah. What's his name? Mason. Hey, Mason, what's up? I ain't messing with you. <laughs> Mason put, got that look on me and I'm just going to close to my mama. Amen. But we're talking about greater works. Yeah. I want to show you how to do these greater works. And I'm not going I'm, I'm, I'm to be long today because last Sunday after I preached, I went to Greenville. That Thursday, I was in Myrtle Beach. And yesterday, I was in Charleston. So I'm not good to war. But I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I wrote this down. Prayer is a demonstration of our complete reliance on God and his power in every area of our life. That's what prayer is. So, so, so wait a minute. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Prayer is the greater works. I'm not going to be long. I, I, I want y'all to catch it. Prayer is the greater works. What did he tell you to do when you pray? He said, enter into thy closet and shut the door behind thee so that the Father which heareth thee in private shall reward thee openly. Wait a minute. In other words, God said, you come and talk to me. Come and talk to me about it. Now, wait a minute. Did Jesus do the same thing? I want to show you he did the same thing. I just want to show y'all something. Go to John chapter 5. Go to John chapter 5. We in John 14. Go to John 5. How did Jesus do these miracles? If he was a man, how did he do these miracles? John chapter 5. Oh, God. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 16. Now, this is right after... Uh, he healed the impotent man and he told him to take up his bed and walk. This is right after that. You know, the Jews were upset with him because of that. They were upset with him because he did the healing on the Sabbath. All right. Follow me on this. Look at, uh, look at verse 16. And therefore did the Jesus, did the Jews, the Jesus, my goodness, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Why? Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto. What does that mean? What does hitherto mean from now on? In other words, it ain't me that's doing the work. It's my father that's doing it. I'm trying to get you to see something. I'm trying to get you to see something. He said, my father works hitherto and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Y'all just let me do some reading for a minute. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. Y'all see it? But what he seeth the Father do. Wait a minute. How did Jesus do miracles? God would call him into prayer and show him the miracle that he wanted him to do and show him how to do it and then send him to do it. Are y'all catching it? 
Wait a minute. He's telling you to do the same thing. He said, enter into your closet. Yes. Oh, God, y'all got to catch this. Look at this. The Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what thing soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son. Are y'all with me? Yes. I'm not going to be long today. I'm really not feeling my best up in here today, but I, I want y'all to get this. For the Father, look at verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and do what? Wait, wait, what's the word? Show. What does it say? He shows him. Are y'all seeing it? Where does he show him to? In prayer. When he comes in prayer, in the secret place, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You want a private lesson from Jesus? Go into prayer with an open heart. Go into prayer and ask God how to give you victory in your circumstance. Go into prayer and ask God that sick daughter or that relative that won't seem to get well. Ask God to show you how to do it. That's what Jesus did. You come in private and the things I show you in private, I'll give you the power to go perform them openly. Are y'all feeling this? Wait a minute, so what's the greatest, what's the greater work? Prayer, Carl, is the only place that's unlimited. You think about it. What did God tell you you could not ask for in prayer? Wait a minute, you can ask for anything you choose in prayer. It's a place, it's not, there's no limits. 